My name is James Watling. We're here at the Contemporary Art Center. Very lucky to be here today uh, with Peep Magazine. And we have a special guest with us, uh, Louis the Sandman Ritson. He's a professional boxer who will shortly be competing for the Lonsdale belt, the British title belt. And we're going to ask him some questions and find out a little bit about his boxing career. Lewis. Yep, all right. <laughs> Thanks all right. for coming in. No, no what, do you, what do you think of where we are? It's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Lovely view. Really good. We've got a fantastic view. Not too much wind, thankfully. You want to keep a hold of him until the fight, <laughs> which is 7th of October, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, 7th of October, four weeks tomorrow. So Fan fantastic. So it's, it's a, you've, you're competing for the Lonsdale belt, which is, uh, I believe, the most prestigious belt, certainly in the, in the, in the UK and, and I think in Europe. Um, and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a big opportunity for you. How do you feel about it? No, I feel good, I feel confident, uh, trains went really well, uh, like I say, it's the best, probably the best belt you could fight for as it, like a British lad domestically as well, so yeah. all, all steam ahead and all go. Fantastic, now obviously you, you're in camp now, we just discussed actually before we started to film that you, you, you're knee deep in camp um, and I was asking you a little bit about your sparring, I watched some of your sparring on Blood Boys, not Blood Brothers, I, I got that wrong, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's pretty heavy stuff, so and I was asking a bit about your opponents, about the weight differences, could you just tell the audience a little bit about how your sparring's gone and about your training in general specifically for this yeah. fight? Well, spawn's been going really well. Uh, Sam O'Mazin, he was one on the Blood Boys spawn. Uh, I probably done a little bit too much spawn at first because obviously the dates kept getting putting back. So we we're getting to a point where we we're getting quite good and quite fit, ten rounds, and then it was all the dates being put back again. So we got further out of weight. So we're just sort of like waiting about now. But starting to uh, spawn again next week with Peter Cope, and then also next week with Sam O'Mazin and. They were the last two spawn partners leading up to the fight. Yeah. So interesting. I just want to ask you a quick question because I'd watched a, a documentary with um, uh, it was uh, uh, Danny Garcia when he was uh, competing against Amir Khan, and we'd watched some of the sparring with Amir Khan. And he was coming in quite hard and with heavy shots, and he and he was sparring against a like a, a bit of a stocky guy, and then it went to Danny Garcia's sparring, whereas he was kind of a bit more movement and touching and trying things. This was a small segment of the sparring. How do you kind of match out your sparring? Do, do, you, do you treat it as if it's an actual fight? Do you treat, to, to, to treat it to try different things? What's your perspective on that? It's a bit of both, really. It depends who you spawn with. I mean, at the start of camp, usually if I wasn't fighting the Southpaw, I'd fight with a spawn with a couple lads from the gym. That would be just nice and light and just learn on a few yeah. things. Yeah. And as camp goes on, then you would get the hard spawn going. And then it's more of a fight, really, like, especially with my style. Anyway, I like to come forward and... It's, well, Robbie Barrett, he's like a back foot southpaw who, I'm, who I'll be fighting, so we've been right. trying to get people like that in. Yeah. Yeah. So just really off his style, then we'll try and find who's got the nearest style to him, and then we'll try and get them in. Got you. The gym you box out, it's a Forest Hall ABC. Yeah. How, how long have you, have you trained there? And, and, and a little bit, but when you started to train. So, so the gym you train at now, and, and when you, when you yeah. first became involved? I think when my dad got his, his dad's the head coach, he got us in, I think it was eight, eight or nine, a little lad, then just boxed there now, I'm 23 now, so all them years, just been at the same yeah. gym. I mean, when I started pro, I went up Scotland for a year, then come back and my last three fights have been back with my dad, so... That's right. Can I ask you a little bit about your dad? He's, he's with us right now. Um, we don't need to bring him on camera unless he wants to come in. He seems keen to come in. Um, so as a trainer, I've, I've not obviously seen you, you and your dad train as yet, but I'd love to come down the gym and see you guys work together soon. But what, what does your dad bring to the table in a sense? What does he bring out of you as, as a trainer? You know, what is his style of training? We've, we've watched maybe you know uh, Enzo and, and, and Joe Kalazaki train together, these father-son relationships. Uh, I, think, I think that's probably the pinnacle of a father-son relationship. So, you know, any pluses and minuses you would see in, in, in your relationship as, as a trainer rather than a father and son? Yeah, well, my dad is like my best pal, he's like my best mate at the same time, so he knows when to push us, when not, when I'm feeling tired, if I'm not feeling tired. They just to get the best out of us, really, he knows what I should be doing workload-wise. And if I'm in the gym and I'm feeling a bit tired, other trainers will probably go, well, you keep going, he might go, oh, just have the day off, have a little bit off, then come in the morrow, and it'll be even harder. So he knows his inside out, really, he knows his better than anyone yeah. so that's probably the main thing which how we click on so well with it yeah, I think that's really important is to have that like relationship where, where you know each other and I think sometimes you know there can be a tendency you know with a father-son relationship to maybe push a little bit too hard and that's perhaps not always as beneficial as it would be that somebody could say they know you so well to say perhaps now you should you should be resting and um, one thing I really wanted to ask you now I meant to lead off with this question actually was the name the Sandman I love that it, it just seems to bring up so much I don't know mystery and intrigue yeah. could you tell us a little bit about unless you want to you might not want to spoil it and not give too much information but the, the name the salmon where did that come from that's an interesting uh, uh, fight name ring name 
just when I was when I was younger in the gym, there was a, uh, a bloke there called David Gardner, and that's what he used to be called. He used to be like a fighting man, right. called uh, the Sam Man, and then obviously I just had like the same sort of style as him, and he he just gave it coming one day with a custom made pair of shorts, <laughs> written on the front, Sam Man on the back. I was only about thirteen or fourteen, give us them, and just stuck ever since ever since there really. Right. So. So that's what's wrong. That's great. So, and another way to look at it is the times running out for your opponents, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. The sand, the starting to run out for your opponents. Um, another question I had for you is, is, is obviously we're looking at this, this, uh, uh, this fight coming up, the British title fight, the Lonsdale belt. What I'm interested in finding, I mean, what we in now? 20 September 2017. Yeah. That is the year, isn't it? Sometimes I get my years wrong. I would like to know what, what your aspirations are in, in professional boxing for the future, but perhaps looking at perhaps a one year. Uh, one year into the future, a five-year projection, and then maybe a ten-year projection. So you're 24 now, 23, sorry. 24 this month, so tw tw 24. Nearly 24. So perhaps say when you're 25, uh, you know, when you when you come up to 30 and perhaps 35, if you're looking to have that longer career, how would you see that projection happening for you as a as a professional fighter? Well, obviously for the next year, hopefully. If I win the when I win the British on the seventh, like defend it outright, have the three defences and keep it. Uh, also, the Commonwealth of that. I mean, I know Sean Dodds he's fighting um, Thomas Stoker for the Commonwealth uh, a week before me. So hopefully, the winner of that and the winner of me and Barrett can that can be the next fight and right. uh, unify domestically, defend them and then move on to European and world. Right. It's it's inter Do you have any plans for your career, or are you just almost taking? Um, would you look to fight into your thirties, or is that something we're going to take each belt as it comes and then see where we go? Take each belt as it comes. Really, by the time I'm 35, I didn't really want to be getting punched in the face. I didn't want to be getting punched in the face still. So, hopefully, I've had a long, successful career by then, and I can say, right, that's it. I had to call it a day. It's, it's interesting. You, you, your record, if I'm not mistaken, as a professional, is 12 and 0. Yeah. Tw uh, 12 wins, no losses, um, with six KOs, yeah. uh, which is a fantastic record to have. I feel personally that professional boxing. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of professional boxing for a number of years now, uh, and but it's really starting to reach, you know, a, a, a pinnacle. Uh, I remember the days personally, quickly with with Oscar De La Hoya and Ricky Hatton, and and, and these guys were retiring. Lennox Lewis and Boxing Monthly. Suddenly, my subscription ran out, and then and then there, it kind of came off. To, it wasn't as popular. But it seemed to have really regained popularity over the last few years. You know, we had Frotch and Groves fighting, and I think it sold out Wembley. Uh, you know, we've we, you know we've we've got um, some tremendous fighters coming out of the UK, and it really just seems to be peaking and and and, and, be, and, and, and gaining more and more popularity. How do you feel about this boxing as a whole, and, and what direction it's going in? No, it's going in the right direction. I mean, the amount of people views that are coming on now as well. That's going mad. Uh, just it's the way it is now. People have to fight each other. Maybe back then they didn't have to, and they just ducked each other and went different routes. But now the promoters are making making the fighters fight each other, and it's when two good fighters are fighting, people will watch them and get excited about it, and that's what's sort of happening now. So and it's good. That's like I said, me and Barrett, for example, probably if he wasn't British champion and I and I wasn't mandatory, we probably would never never have fought. But now he is and I am. It's it's a good fight, and it's the same with everyone else. Like even the lightweights. Stoke and Dodds, them know they're fighting each other for a belt. Like everyone's just getting excited about it, so yeah. it'll be good. Hundred percent. I think it's really, like you say, it's it's really, uh, it's a very popular, uh, it's a very popular, uh, not just sport, but just just uh, just entertainment value for the general public as well as as well as the hardcore boxing fan. Just very quickly, again, we're very lucky to be at the Baltic uh, Contemporary Arts Centre, um, and w w I've got a few more questions that I'd like to ask you as well. Um, boxing you know, past and, and modern day fighters, is there anybody particular that stands out for you? It could be a fighter that's inspired you, it could be a fighter that perhaps, um, you know, whose style you kind of wanted to model slightly or take things from. Um, is there anybody that stands out for you that, that, that really for you represents what a professional boxer should be, you know, both perhaps in and out of the ring? I, I don't say like, wouldn't say like somebody in particular, but like the styles of fighting, like I like to come forward, that's what I think, like boxing and take like a fighting man sport, I like to come forward and have a fight. That's the type of boxers I like. I mean, I mean, everyone. There's all different styles, but to me, a boxer is somebody that goes and actually has a go. Yeah. Like right, however, we'll have a fight. It's a fighting man sport. It's a contact sport, isn't it? So that's just the type of fighters I like, and that's who's that's who I would like sort of class as. Yeah. I'd like to ask you a, 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 quest, a couple of questions as well. One's a bit of a, a fun one, um, but on this question. Another big fight coming up, other than your own, is the Triple G Golovkin yeah. versus Canelo, uh, Sal or, or, or uh, Canelo Alvarez. Um, 
what's your predictions for that fight? Do you favor one fighter over the, over the other? And uh, it, it's going to be a tremendous fight. We've got two real champions. How do you feel about it? I think Canelo's going to do it. I just think he's... I, I mean, look at the condition he's in at the minute. He looks absolutely great. Uh, and I think Gloff can struggle against Brook, and I would say Canelo is a bigger, faster, stronger version of Brook. So I think he's going to be in trouble. So I think the JJJ train's going to... He's not... He's just going to... I've, I don't think he's he's powerful, but I just don't think he'll might not hurt Canelo as much as what he's hurt his other fighters as well. Other than being as just as big as well, so we'll see. Hundred percent. Do you have any? My prediction is that I'm a Canelo fan as well. I, I'm a Glovkin fan, but I think Canelo's going to win. I think Canelo, and, and for the the gamblers out there, you might want to listen to what me and Lewis are talking about right now and put your money here. Um, no guarantees. I think Canelo's going to knock Glovkin down once and then win on points, and almost their power would cancel each other out. What's your predictions for the fight? I think uh, Canelo will stop him late on. 10, 10, 11 or 12 during the late stages of the fight, I think Canelo will, Canelo will stop him. Could be worth checking the odds at uh, uh, Betfair. I don't think we're being sponsored by any of these guys, but we'll give you a, a shout out there. Um, the, the fun question... Uh, one of the biggest fights perhaps in history as, as far as regarding viewing figures and pay-per-view vies, I haven't checked my information, the uh, statistics or data on that could be worth checking out, was Mayweather versus McGregor. And I just wanted to get your opinion on it, your views on it, how you thought the fight would go, uh, and, and just to see what you thought of it. Because it's it kind of brought a lot of people perhaps who weren't boxing fans and, and, and brought some of the MMA crowd into into the, uh, you know, the boxing element. And just to get a, a few words from you about that and what you thought. I thought this Floyd just played over me. Like personally, I think Floyd won easy. I think the first four or five rounds done nothing, and then just stepped on the gas. I mean, when you've ever seen Floyd Mayweather go forward with his hands up, yeah. walking someone down, never. Uh, I see. I've, it's different with them little gloves on compared to the ten ounces on in the MMA. And maybe Conor has got power in the in the lightweight MMA, but he had no power that could hurt Floyd. He just didn't hurt him at all, did he? And Floyd just played with him. Yeah. Are you a Floyd fan? No, not really, but I'd watch him, but I mean, I'm not, he's quite boring, isn't he? I mean, he's a great boxer, but he's, like I see what I've seen before, he's not my type of yeah. boxer that I would watch, but what well, he's done for the sport now, he's, he's up there and he's yeah. one of the all-time best and just played with, played with McGregor. Awesome. Um, we're coming towards the end, the end of the interview right now, but I just wanted to kind of like offer the mic in a sense to you, just to just for anything you'd like to say. It could be about about the boxing, about your uh, your club, about your father, or just just anything general that you would like to pay. Perhaps a thank you for some sponsors, things like that. But just anything you would like to say bef before we before the interview comes to an end. No, I, I got sponsors. Got Deluxe Floor and uh, Elliot Taxi, so I'll shout out to them. Uh, and then that's about it really got nothing nothing else to say good interview fantastic Lewis I just want to say when I, when I first was introduced to you you came across as just as you are just a real yeah. genuine good guy so it's, it's nice to see a professional boxer at such a high level just you know being an example I think to other people and just you know representing what, what really the, you know competitive sports all about is you know being a good person but also being you know successful and, and, and working hard and dedicating yourself so so just want to say thank, no, you very no, much thank, you, thank you very much Lewis good to see you we're going to we're going to enjoy the rest of the time on the ball um, oh, in fact, I was just about to say we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna shut down, but we've, we're actually going to bring in Lewis's, uh, Lewis's dad just to ask a few questions. He doesn't mind being on camera. Um, what do you think of the view? That's my first question. Fantastic. It's a great city, this Newcastle. Yeah. One, one of the best cities, uh, you know, and we live here, so yeah. we're lucky. 100%. We talked about this before, didn't we? Just about how beautiful Newcastle is in the northeast, and uh, talked about the, the Northumberland coast and how, how great it is, and uh, we're very lucky to have this. So, good to have you on camera. Thank you for coming in. I just want to ask you a few questions. Just, uh, I'd like to know how long you've been in the sport for, how long you, how you, got, you got started in the sport. Obviously, you're Lewis's trainer, but you know, how did you get into boxing, and what, what, what attracted you to it? Well, I'm from a, um, a boxing family. Right. Uh, my father had uh, 12 brothers. Right. Um, in the ball box in the army and uh, we've just sort of like carried the tradition on. Yeah. Um, I boxed when I was uh, um, in my youth um, and then turned to training and I've been a trainer about 30 years now. I've got a, a, a strong um, amateur club. And I, um, I've got my pro licence now with uh, Owen Ray um, and we think we're going to be successful. It's uh, funny enough, I mentioned uh, to, uh, I was doing some coaching this morning and I mentioned to a student uh, that Lewis and, and you guys were obviously 
part of Forest Hall ABC, and that's a really well-respected club. Um, it's 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 an interesting one because I mean the Northeast I think has has a tremendous kind of um, foundation of boxers, uh, you know, amateur boxing clubs and professional boxing clubs. And just touching on that, the question asked before to Lewis about boxing as a whole, how do you feel it's kind of uh, it's came up over the last few years? You know, if you go back five years, ten years, twenty years compared to now, how do you feel boxing is perceived in, in in the general public side? Do you think it's becoming more popular or less popular as as, as the years roll by? Well, definitely more popular. The clubs are more scientific. Um, it isn't like 20 years ago where young lads joined the boxing club and they got bashed about. Uh, ev everything's changed for the better. Uh, young kids, um, they want to better themselves. They, w they want, they want um, to challenge each other. Yeah, and, and this, we've got, we, we've proved this. We'll, we'll have um, probably 60 to 70 guys at the gym the night. Wow. And they're all, and from the age of six, and. Uh, well brought up, it's nice to know it's well brought up kids in Newcastle area um, that want to try and better themselves, be fit, healthy and learn the noble art yeah. of uh, Forest Hall Boxing Club. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, I mean, you know, nowadays with all the social media, we've got Instagram, we've got people on the phones all the time, perceived negativity from, from all different aspects and almost as if to say now it's like, you know, I was, I was touching about um, uh, you know, like everybody gets a participation uh, participation medal, and you know, if you participate in a, in a sport, you get a medal for it. It's not necessarily about how well you're doing, and it almost undermining the values, which is you know, if you work hard and you dedicate yourself, you live a clean life, then you can succeed. And I really think that boxing represents all those things, you know, and that perhaps you know, kids should be encouraged to go to the local boxing club and, and not not to be knocked around, as you say, but just to go and learn a sport and better themselves. And is is and that's obviously something you'd recommend for for young kids wanting to to achieve. Yes, d definitely. I mean, you know, boxing's a two, it's a two-horse race. You know, there's one winner and one loser. You can be on a football pitch of, of, of 11 players, and you can have the worst, the worst game in your life, and your, your team might still win 4-0. So, when you come to a boxing club, you get fit um, and strong very quickly, but you, you soon get into the the, the work ethic of um, I want to, I want to be the best of that I can be and we'll encourage that yeah um, and, and the lesser leagues them, them still get well looked after yeah you know but it's all about taking it to the limit taking yourself to the limit yeah yeah and I think that's good that's a good example and, and, and good uh, uh, goals to aspire to just with Lewis obviously he has this big fight which we've talked about Lonsdale belt um, can you just tell us a little bit about his training and a little bit about anything specifically you've worked on or something perhaps new that you've worked on in preparation for the for the fight uh, we've you've obviously known Lewis his whole life <laughs> so and you seem to be a, f a great team together so where do you see him getting to and as I say is there anything specifically you've worked on for this upcoming fight well firstly he trains six days a week of every week um, and that, that's been for, for two and a half yeah now Used to be four days a week. Now it's six days a week. You know, he's got to watch what he eats, watch his uh, his sleep patterns, his training patterns, um, techniques, different different techniques. We've got um, Owen Ray in the club, who's a uh, like a, a real tactician, and uh, he bounces off Owen, and that's why he's in the team. Um, when your father and son, you know, sons, <laughs> they very quickly get sick of listening to. Uh, to the dad's voice. Now I learned a while ago. To I, pass I have a 16-year-old. I, I I feel that. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I, as a father-son type of type of um, team that we are, I've learned to pass him on. I pass him on. I pass him on to different guys yeah. attached to the club, yeah. and it's always worked. Yeah. Other guys can't do that, you know. It's like he's mean. Yeah. So yeah. I've never done that. So um, different techniques. Um, you, you can't train any, train any harder. Yeah. Uh, but we're seeing, we're seeing good strides. Um, working on the South Pole, yeah, style of fighter. Um, he's he, he, he's bred and he trains to the grind. Anybody that he fights down, and, he, and he's good at it, and that's his main strength. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to beat him, you're going to have to work very very hard. Mm. That, that's all I can say. I like that. I think I think we're going to leave it there. We we couldn't ask for better words to have been have, have, have been said. Um, work hard, and you achieve.
and anybody who wants to beat them, they're going to have to work even harder. And I don't even know if that's possible. Guys, thanks for coming in today. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you both, two absolute gentlemen. Um, once again, thanks to the Baltic Contemporary Center of Art uh, for having us in here today. Subscribe to Pete Magazine. Uh, we, we cover boxing, kickboxing, mixed martial arts, all the combat sports. You can subscribe through, you can, uh, subscribe through, through YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you've enjoyed the interview. And make sure you tune in October the 7th to see Lewis Ritson become British champion. Sport, well done. Oh, good. Do it yes. in the new. I can't say participation. Hey. That's no. it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. Edit that out. I'll keep it.